moving from iPhones after many, many years and jumping both feet into the Android ecosystem, it's the learning curve is steep. <laughs> After many years of doing astrophotography with the iPhone, I'm, I'm comfortable in myself enough to say that I've pretty well mastered what you could do with it. I wanted to make sure that what I was doing with that phone, I could do on the Android, but I wanted to do it better. When I say better, I genuinely mean better. I think that the camera is capable of more on the S25 Ultra than what is on the iPhone 16 Pro. I'm talking about the planning apps, the apps that I was reliant on working out, is that a star or is that a planet? Is that where the galactic core will be at this time of the night? And is the sky dark enough? So I've spent the last, probably the last month going through all the things that I could find for doing this on the Android. I'm talking about planning apps, editing apps, all of these different things, shooting apps, and I'll show you what I found. When I say the camera is better, I mean generally for astrophotography. I don't mean for everything else. I think the video smooth, that active mode on iPhone is just mint, it's so good. But for astrophotography, I think this phone is definitely the better phone. Where I am today is Mount Hope, and I'm heading up to the top of Suicide Rock. It's kind of, uh, okay, I don't know, I guess it's a little bit symbolic of my learning curve, it has been steep. The first app I wanna to talk to you about is, is about planning. And one of the apps that I used to use a lot on the iPhone is the Night Sky app. I think it is genuinely the best app for finding what's in the night sky on an iPhone. You can search for anything, it will point the camera, it uses augmented reality and it points the, your phone up to where the thing is you're searching for. And if you're not sure about what a planet or something, a bright star that you think, and you go, is that, you know, is that Venus or is that Mars? Is, is it one of those things? This app will help you find that. And I, that app is not available on the Android system. I've been looking now for, my God, there are so many bees here. <laughs> all through here, where I've been walking all through, there are so many bees. Anyway, the, um, what was I saying? The, the, I've been looking for something to replace the app Night Sky on the Android and I haven't been able to find something that does everything that it does with just one app. I've got a few different apps and it does it, answers all the questions that I used to ask of the iPhone. Uh, to identify what planets are out there and what constellations are out there, I'm using Sky Safari 7. It is a paid app and by far it is the best thing that I have found to identify what's in the sky on an Android. If it's your first time out there and you want to go and shoot something specific to what's happening in the sky, you may have seen like there's a meteor shower coming or something like that, you can put it into this app and it will point you into the direction that it's in. It will also let you fast forward time in days and months and minutes and hours and go back in time, which I don't actually see another app doing ever, to see what this sky was doing back then or what it is going to do at another point. And it's got good compass reference points there so you can line it up with what you know is going on on the ground. It's a fantastic app for identifying what's in the sky when. The main thing that it doesn't do, which Night Sky app does on the iPhone, is hunting for the ISS. I enjoy doing that. It is something that is genuinely good fun. You see it going through the night and it goes through the night sky so fast. It's a really good challenge to get out there and, and shoot it. I've done plenty of tutorials on how to do it. And I will do that again with the S25 Ultra shortly. But it's, it's not available on this app, so I had to find another app to do that. To find the ISS, I use ISS Detector on the Android. It's not as good as the Night Sky app. It's really good, that Night Sky app. It's very intuitive the way it works. But the ISS Detector will show you every pass of the ISS that's happening near you, whether it's on the other side of the world or, um, on the horizon or straight up in the air. It's going to tell you wherever it is. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it does work the way you expect it to work. And I'll do a full tutorial about how to use that app to hunt the ISS in another video. So make sure you subscribe. But have a look at the view out there. You can see so far. 
you can probably see my house. It's oh, geez, where would it be? It's out, it's out in that direction anyway. <laughs> It's a, it's a, considering how flat our land is here, uh, it's one of the places I really love coming to because you get it nice and high up and you can just see for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. It's, it's a pretty bloody good spot. To answer your questions, yes, um, there are definitely snakes up here and yes, they will bite you and kill you. And no, I'm not too concerned. You make enough noise up here, they tend to leave you alone. I haven't seen one here today. The sun's coming out and I can feel it. Like it's warming up a bit, but not that much further to go. But um, it's best keeping an eye out for snakes at this time of year. Because uh, you can get a little bit complacent with the cooler mornings. But anyway, let's continue. This is something else that you've got to contend with up here. These these box thorns. Have a go at the thorns on that sucker. It's uh, pretty full on. You're running one of those into your eye, you'll know about it. Far from the top now, <laughs> getting pretty knackered. Can flat the flat earther out there is getting <laughs> is getting pretty tired. But my car is way down there. Can you see that? Can you see that on there? Just over there. Doesn't seem like I've gone a long way up by the camera, but it's a long way. Right, have a look at the view. It's awesome. There is a special reason I come up here. I'll tell you about that in a second. Getting closer now, the suicide rocks up here. Looks like I've got to walk um, maybe up through here and around the top here, I suspect. This is not the peak of the feature that we are getting to. It's the second highest point here. The highest point is actually the trig point at the top, which is my first goal. Then I'll see how far we can get there to suicide rock. I'm not that keen to go up on top of that. There's nothing at all stopping you falling off there and going splat on the bottom. You can see so far from up here. All cow swamp out there, it's great. The other app that I've started using on an Android phone, which there may well be something for the iPhone, I'm not sure. I just used to do this stuff before I left home, before I'd go to a location when I was scouting things out, and that is a light pollution app. It is as good as a light pollution map info uh, website. It tells you the same thing, what the bottle level is, where I'm shooting. And you can move all over the map there and, and see how it works. But it's good to have all of that on the one device. So to do what we do with, well, you've got to remember with phone astrophotography, generally speaking, no phone's going to do it bad. Some will just do a little bit better than others. But there's two things that you must have to capture stunning night photos. One is a tripod and two is a dark sky. And generally speaking, that's about it. As long as you've got a dark sky, so that light pollution app, is so important to work out your location to get a dark sky. I would encourage you to get a Bortle 3, 2, best case 1, where I am here, it's a Bortle 1 location. I come up here a lot to shoot my astrophotography for a key reason, I'll, as I said, I'll tell you what that is in a second. I don't think we are that far from the top. Well, this is pretty high and it doesn't, in fact, I can see power, I can see the um, antennas just there that are up on top of Mount Hope. So. We'll get up there and I'll show you, I'll show you around a bit. Well, this is the top. This is the trig point. This is the highest point of Mount Hope. Suicide Rock is down over there. But what a view. Just down the bottom there, you can see on the way in, there is a uh, old homestead there that belongs to one of the local doctors, legend of a bloke. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just nice. In, in an area that is just so flat, Everywhere you look is flat. Uh, it's just so nice to be on the ground, but up in the air, it's, it's great. The main planning app that I use, if you've watched the channel for any period of time, is PhotoPills. 
I had photo pills on uh, the iPhone. I've used it for year, well before I even started the channel. Unfortunately, when you go from iOS to Android, like quite a few apps, you've got to purchase it again. And I get that. There's a lot of development that goes in to both of those platforms f from those developers. So I get that. So I've paid for it again, and it works just like it works on iOS. It is a sensational app to plan where the galactic core is at what time of night, and it will use augmented reality with the camera so that you can fast forward time, remove time, uh, and work out where the galactic core will be in relation to the subject that you want to shoot. Which brings me to why we're here. That small rock that you see just there, that's the top of Suicide Rock. We're not going to go over to it, but I've shot one of my very first biggest selling prints I shot of Suicide Rock. And I shot it from down the other side, pointing back up. Um, I was over that side of the rock a little bit, pointing back up this way, and the galactic core was up behind the rock. And this is what the photo looked like. That has been, uh, before the excavator photo, that's been one of the biggest selling photos I've ever had. And I'm going to replicate that in about, oh, it's about two weeks time now, because the moon is full tonight, uh, or today. Um, so in about two weeks time, I'll be able to replicate that, because the galactic core is almost vertical up over this side at the moment. So using photo pills, that's when I need to come back. As far as shooting the galactic core goes, and what app we use to shoot it, there are a number of apps on iOS that you can do it with, and you can do it obviously with the camera as well, the, the, the camera app on the iOS. But on the, in Android, there's not as many apps. So if you're, <coughs> shooting Astro, if you're shooting Astro on an Android and you've got a special app that you do it with, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to test it where we have really, really dark skies here. I'm generally using Expert RAW. Expert RAW gives you a RAW file, but it does a bit of processing of that image before it packs it into a raw file. So it's not a true raw as such, it's just a raw package of the file. But at the end of the day, personally, I don't care. It's going to give me a good image. It's like Apple's Pro Raw. It doesn't give you a raw file as such, it gives you Apple's version of a raw file. And the Expert Raw on Samsung is similar to that. It enhances the image, the way it thinks it should be and packages it into a raw file. So if you can get your head around that and you're okay with that, well, we move on. If you are a regular viewer on this channel, you would have heard me say S25 a few times through this video. And I've always said there's not enough in that phone for me to upgrade to that phone. I just didn't warrant it. I couldn't, couldn't get my head around it. I came across a feature that only the S25 does. So once this moon phase finishes, because it has to do with Astro, I hadn't seen it before until I was reading a Reddit uh, post about it. And I went, what the hell is that? It doesn't exist on this phone. Then I worked out it's only on the S25 Ultra. So I went and got myself a 25 Ultra. And once this moon phase finishes, we're gonna test it out because I'm a little bit skeptical about it. It's about portraits with Astro. So if you want to see what that does, and it does it all with a push of one button, because uh, I'm dead keen to see it, but not for, not for portraits. So. <laughs> so if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and I'll show you what it's about very soon. Then my planning apps, that's the shooting app I would use is the uh, Expert Raw. However, if I was going to stack things, and we will do that again shortly soon on this channel, we're going to stack a heap of S25 Ultra images on the computer and we'll see how good we can get the sky from a phone, but um, the editing side of things is still Adobe Lightroom. Absolutely love it. It's a fantastic app for doing everything that I do here on this channel. All right, that's about it for here. What do you think? If you've got apps that you use on the Android phones that I haven't spoken about here and you think they do it better than the stuff that I've just told you, please let me know. It's, uh, I'd love to try it. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Catch you later. <laughs>